Through These Doors is sponsored by Shields. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Over the years, you've had a chance to meet some of our highly skilled experts. Merry Christmas. And while it takes years to become a Shields expert in the outdoors or sports or fashion. Merry Christmas. During the holiday season, we're all experts. Merry Christmas. At spreading Christmas cheer. Merry Christmas. So from our family to yours, Merry Christmas. I got public health final. Uh, that's not till Tuesday, but uh, on Monday I have a computer science class. It's kind of tricky, so I guess you know with the games this weekend, it's gonna be kind of tough. So I'll put be uh, putting a lot of hours on Sunday. I just had a, read a lot of papers, I guess. I don't know. I don't really have too many finals, but I guess we'll see. Um, it's been a pretty stressful week for me. Uh, I got a lot of stuff to do, but. Uh, Hopefully I can uh, finish off the semester with uh, some good grades, so we'll see. Yeah, we like to hit the, hit the classroom and bro out, you know, study together. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just bros everywhere. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they're doing great. I think uh, they need a little bit of help. Sweep. One little word with so much meaning for a North Dakota hockey team struggling to find consistency. Two weeks ago, the pressure was mounting for a struggling and injured UND squad. You know, when you go to a, a program like this where you're expected to win, and you know, if you don't do that, the pressure and you're held accountable. So I think, uh, you know, average is, an ex is uh, accepted here. It's uh, you got to strive for excellence. St. Lawrence and the nation's leading scorer, Greg Carey, came to town. The Saints struck first, but UND's Connor Gorder tied it with a power play goal early in the second period. Keaton Thompson, a Devil's Lake native, scored his first career goal in the third. However, the St. Lawrence power play proved to be too much for UND as it converted three of six chances on Friday. The odds were stacked against UND on Saturday. The team was 0-4-2 on Saturday night all season and 0-3-1 in the last four. That would change on this night. Rocco Grimaldi scored on a shorthanded breakaway, energizing the crowd and the team. Late in the second period, the hot hand continued for Connor Gorder, who blasted his second goal in as many nights. 31 seconds later, Stefan Patton netted his second goal in three games, as UND was back in the win column. North Dakota looked to continue the momentum at Western Michigan, a new conference foe. Western Michigan, in front of its rowdy fans, scored first. But UND and sophomore goaltender Zane Gothberg were solid from there. Gothberg made a number of key saves throughout the game as the UND special teams heated up. Freshman Luke Johnson, the Grand Forks native, scored a pair of power play goals to put UND ahead. Then in the third period, the offense continued for the fourth line 
Senior Derek Rodwell scored the eventual game winner, exciting the bench and leading UND to victory. Back to the rink on Saturday, UND was seeking its first sweep of the season. Things started similar to Friday night. The Broncos scored a first period goal, but UND was unfazed. Dylan Simpson, Paul Ledoux, and Grimaldi provided the offense, while Gothberg shut it down between the pipes. Gothberg's biggest save came with 28 seconds remaining. A loose puck squirted to the right of Gothberg, who somehow was able to kick his pad across the goal mouth to seal the win and the sweep for UND. And it's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's so hard to, to sweep. And, you know, we, uh, we played two solid games, and I think more than anything, we just battled and competed. No time to celebrate, however, as it's back to work with another tough opponent coming in this weekend. You know, getting the sweep was huge. It could be a turning point to our season here and, you know, really putting our foot in the right direction. And, um, you know, not to look too much on last week, but it's, you know, it's another week here. We got to get ready for it and we need, uh, you know, all the points we can get. We need a couple of wins here. So we're just uh, looking forward to that. The great thing about snowboarding is the adventure. All day long, you're finding different ways of doing different things and it's never the same. I don't mind snowboarding alone, but if you've got your friends up there on the mountain and you guys can all cruise down together, it's a really, really fun time. Snowboarding has been really fun and really rewarding for me, and I want it to be fun and rewarding for my customers as well. I'm Lindsay McKinstry, and I'm one of the snowboard experts at Shields. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper. Come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Hi, join me, Tim Hennessy, along with Danny Letson as we count down the top plays of the fall as chosen by you, the fans. Relive the great moments and plays from the last five months. Cast your vote today by visiting undsports.com and continue the conversation online by using the hashtag Insider Weekly. Catch the episode on New Year's Day at 8 p.m. on undsports.com, then Friday, January 3rd at 5.30 on Midco Sports Network. For the first time in 10 years, NDSU heads north to Grand Forks to take on UND. It's the first women's basketball matchup between in-state rivals in Grand Forks in the Division I era. See it Saturday, December 14th at the Betty Engelstead Sioux Center. Get your tickets at the Ralph Engelstead Arena box office or online at undsports.com. You're different today than yesterday. Yet, you're still a college hockey fan. Proud of national titles. Riveted with stories about the early days. Proud of the school's first big stage appearance. Excited knowing you compete among the game's elite. And recalling the recent rain over college hockey's best. The puck has dropped and the NCHC has arrived. It's time. Get in the game. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper. Come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Jordan Schmaltz was a first round draft pick of the St. Louis Blues in 2012. The draft process was not only exciting, but also a dream come true for Jordan. Um, it was actually in Pittsburgh at their new rink, so it was pretty cool to see that. Um, you know, I kind of had an idea where I was going to go maybe, you know, late first or early second round, so I was just kind of, you know, hoping for the best. Uh, you know, just kind of play my cards and see what happens, just have fun with it, and I think that's what I did. And, you know, it was an experience, uh, you know, of a lifetime. It was, it was fun, and I was fortunate to get a selected in the first round and it's kind of a dream come true. Well I had uh, you know I just kind of woke up, uh, ate breakfast with the fam, um, kind of just talked with them. I actually think I met with a couple teams that day. You know we just kind of just didn't really think about it, just kind of hung out, saw the city a little bit and then uh, I don't know maybe around like four o'clock 
five or whatever it was, we, we headed over to the, uh, the arena. And then it's just kind of a waiting game from there just uh, to hear your name called. And, you know, like I said, uh, kind of, I went 25th, so it was, uh, you know, you wait a little bit, but it was, uh, it was a relief and just, uh, like I said, just a dream come true. Schmaltz looked back at his path to UND, starting with playing for his hometown hockey team. First, I, I started playing, um, you know, just my hometown of Verona, Wisconsin, and then um, from there I, I started playing my uh, youth hockey, AAA in uh, Chicago for the mission. And then uh, my junior year in high school, I went to Sioux City in the USHL, I played for the Sioux City Musketeers. And then uh, my senior year in high school, I played for uh, Green Bay, Green Bay Gamblers in the USHL as well. Hockey wasn't the only sport the Schmaltzes played. As his father Mike lettered in football at UND, as did his uncles Mark Schmaltz and Monty Schmaltz. I like football, I played that growing up, uh, baseball, but probably, probably football, I, uh, I like that growing up. You know, hockey was just the one that, you know, I liked the most, obviously, and you know, I think uh, it was always my dream in the back of my head to, to play here one day and play hockey here, and you know, obviously with my, my uncles and my dad playing here, it's uh, it pretty cool to, you know, have that uh, connection. The adjustment from junior hockey to college hockey can be both rewarding and challenging. Well, I think starting out in the defensive game, I think he's, uh, I think he's a lot stronger. You know, coming in as a freshman, I think that's one thing that you, uh, you adapt and change from is getting used to the speed of the game and, uh, and how strong players are here compared to junior hockey. You know, he's gotten stronger, and it's saying getting stronger, you can close tight gaps quicker as far as taking time and space away from uh, offensive players. And, and also his uh, resiliency as far as uh, uh, getting back the next shift, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're gassed after a shift, his uh, bounce back time is a lot quicker now, you know, his conditioning. So uh, just being an overall stronger player, I think. Given, given a lot uh, early on, you know, as a freshman, normally it takes a little bit of adjustment period. He was one kid that could, could uh, you know, log the minutes and, and do very well. Uh, in saying that, you know what, he had some bumps in the road last year too that he learned from and I think he's, he's evening out those bumps in the road this year to having more consistency in his game and, and what I like about his game now is now he's bringing a little pop offensively of jumping up in the play and, and being more evasive in the offensive zone. The duo of Jordan Schmaltz and Dylan Simpson are trying to bring more offense to the decor this year. I think this year he's embraced it well to kind of be me and him a shutdown pair as well as try to provide some offense. I think he's kind of taken on that role pretty well so far this year. Uh, for him, he's, he's been learning a lot throughout the years. Uh, even in a one-year span last year to the end of last year, he learned a lot from his partner, Derek Forbert, and kind of developed his game in that sense. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's huge. Um, you know, you, even in the NHL, you see it, it's so hard to score goals. And, you know, if you have a, a defenseman or two on a team that can kind of join the play and be the second layer of offense to get shots through or to, you know, create odd man rushes. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty big. Uh, in practice, you always, you try to play like, in a, you're gonna play in a game. So it's the same thing, just get up in the play, uh, you know, try to make things happen and, you know, get pucks on net. So, uh, you know, you give your forwards an opportunity to score or even yourself. Yeah, he's a very knowledgeable, very smart player. Uh, he, he's one kid that, uh, one young man where you tell him something to do or make an adjustment to the game plan, he gets it right away. And uh, and that tells you that, uh, you know, he has good coaching all the way up, but also that he's a driven, focused player that, uh, you know, he takes pride in learning the game and, and listening and, and uh, making changes on the fly. You know, our coaches are always stressing it and, you know, to get up in the play and, you know, give our forwards options. So I think if you can do that, it just, you know, not only just adds another threat to, to scoring, but just, um, you know, to make plays and, have options. I think just the confidence that he's been able to build since he's been here. Uh, for me, playing with him, it's a pleasure. Uh, it keeps it pretty fun and you know, we keep each other accountable, but at the same time, we roll with it and enjoy it a lot. Uh, he's been great to play with and his offensive abilities is some of the best I've seen and you know, he's, he can get up in the play and make a lot of good things happen. For the first time in 10 years, NDSU heads north to Grand Forks to take on UND. It's the first women's basketball matchup between in-state rivals in Grand Forks in the Division I era. See it Saturday, December 14th at the Betty Engelstead Sioux Center. Get your tickets at the Ralph Engelstead Arena box office or online at undsports.com.
Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper. Come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Hi, join me, Tim Hennessy, along with Danny Letson as we count down the top plays of the fall as chosen by you, the fans. Relive the great moments and plays from the last five months. Cast your vote today by visiting undsports.com and continue the conversation online by using the hashtag Insider Weekly. Catch the episode on New Year's Day at 8 p.m. on undsports.com, then Friday, January 3rd at 5.30 on Midco Sports Network. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper, come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Over the years, you've had a chance to meet some of our highly skilled experts. Merry Christmas. And while it takes years to become a Shields expert in the outdoors or sports or fashion. Merry Christmas. During the holiday season, we're all experts. Merry Christmas. At spreading Christmas cheer. Merry Christmas. So from our family to yours, Merry Christmas. Although winter break for the players is short, it is a chance for them to go home and spend time with families. For the Patton, Panzarella, and Gorda residents, Christmas is a time to celebrate friends and family with a little holiday spirit. There we go. We uh, just picked up this tree this year. Uh, last year we actually had a real tree in our house. Um, but now with an apartment we thought coming up the elevator would probably be kind of sketchy having a big tree. I like the real tree. I mean this makes more sense for us this year. Last year we had a lot more space. We don't really have much space in here. but. All four of us uh, enjoy Christmas and enjoy the, the holidays and the gifts and stuff too. So we, uh, we like to celebrate before we go home for Christmas together. So I think uh, we drew names uh, on Sunday for Secret Santa in our household. So can't tell you who, who I have though. We usually watch Home Alone too. We're big fans of Home Alone. I love Home Alone. Yeah, we've watched it a couple times yeah. this year. I just love Christmas movies. Well. Our house had like three different rooms and one of the rooms was basically the Christmas room. Yeah, we just room. had the tree in there and lights and yeah. it was pretty cool. But freshman year, Pans and I stayed together in Walsh and uh, we had that place pretty lit up. And then we got in trouble. Because yeah, there was a fire, hire, fire hazard, so. We came home from Western Michigan at, what time was that? Like two in the morning? Yeah. Two in the morning last week. And we walked through the door, or it must have been like one in the morning. Anyways, we walked through the door, and we hadn't done any decorations or anything. And I opened the door, and it, it smelled nice in here. It smelled like apple pie, and there's like candles going, and the trees were up, and the decorations were up, and this gingerbread house was made, and he made cookies. So he wins the five star roommate award for yeah. this year. I don't know, every time I leave Step Home alone, there's a little bit less. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be an addition, a third floor. <laughs> this is home for me, so I mean, it's not that big. Not that big of a difference, but you know, it's nice getting some time off, you know, relaxing a little bit. Obviously, Christmas is a good time for everyone. I'm actually going to go to, uh, our family goes on a skiing trip every year to, to wherever. This year we're going to Colorado. Obviously, I'm not going to ski, but go hang out there and for a couple days, and then I'm going to go back home to Wisconsin hang out there with the fam and then head back up here. Uh, either we go to my aunt's house in Fargo or we go to my house. But this year we're going to my house, so we're definitely going to play some pond hockey. I think Christmas Eve, that's the plan. And then just wake up and open presents. Every year, um, Christmas Eve, we always go over to my grandma's place. Uh, there's always like 40 family members that go over there and some friends and stuff. And then uh, Christmas Day, wake up, see the cookies that Santa's eating, and then we open up some presents, and then we go back over to my grandma's again for uh, like a late afternoon lunch. And that's pretty much it. Just hang out and talk with some family. Me and me and Luke always go to my grandma's house. We get the whole family there. It's pretty fun. I mean, other than that, not really. Just dinner, and breakfast, church, obviously. Usually, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, all my parents' friends come over. 
uh, on Boxing Day to uh, to spend the spend the day and stuff. And usually, kids will play street hockey outside uh, on the driveway or you know just hang out and stuff. And <clears throat> so we'll usually have about 20, 30 people at our house, which is pretty cool. It's nice. Uh, yeah, Boxing Day is just kind of like a Black Friday where stores open up at 6 a.m. and for crazy deals and then yeah it's just a day off so a lot of fun. I'm gonna go back home to Canada to my igloo and uh, you know celebrate Christmas. Uh, we've got a big family event every Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and we have about 50, 50 family members that uh, we all celebrate together so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah we sit around our tree and open up gifts just like every other family and uh, it's a lot of fun. Our family, we usually do like a Secret Santa thing um, with all our cousins and stuff, so that's uh, always pretty fun. Christmas morning, open up the presents and just kind of, you know, spend some time together and, and just talk and, you know, it's pretty laid back. I head back home to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan there. Um, I don't know, it's pretty traditional family Christmas. Uh, it's not 50 uh, members like Drake there, but kind of get my grandparents' house and, uh, my aunt and uncle actually live like right on the same street, so we kind of go there, kind of both places. And uh, my little brothers are getting older and stuff like that, so we head out to uh, play some hockey downstairs. And if it's not as cold as it's been around here lately, then hopefully we can get outside and have a little bit of fun there. But just in general, being with the family is just what's most special. Oh, I'm gonna be able to go ice fishing and stuff. Just actually sleep in, maybe. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, Christmas morning, my mom always makes crepes. And uh, so we usually feast on that before we open gifts. We always, uh, I don't know when it started, but I think it's probably because my brother and I were being brats when we were younger, and I always wanted to open up a gift Christmas Eve because I couldn't wait till the morning. So now we still do that every Christmas Eve. I open up a gift, usually something small. But um, this year I just asked for clothes. I don't have many of those, so um, socks and underwear. Uh, I don't know, I think I still get up early Christmas Day and wait on the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, I don't know, that was a tough one this year. Like, what do you give the guy that has it all? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my mom's been asking me what I want, stuff like that. And honestly, I didn't have a really good answer for her. Hopefully maybe some gift cards and maybe go Boxing Day shopping for the Americans. That's kind of like our Canadian Black Friday. That's the day after Christmas, but I'm not too sure really. I'm kind of getting to that age where it's kind of tough to get any fun, cool toys for Christmas. I can't really ask for Hot Wheels anymore, so. I haven't really thought about it. Probably some socks. I don't know, I'm running low on those. Uh, I don't know, hopefully my mom does my laundry or something like that. I don't know. Not uh, not really high maintenance, so. Well, it's getting tougher to ask for stuff, but I don't know if my mom can go to Goodwill, find the beauty clothes for me. I like that. Always enjoy that, but I don't know, the socks are always good. Maybe gift cards, something like that. Um, this year, I'm. Uh, asking for a miter saw and a framing nailer so kind of different but it's something I need so sure I think uh, pretty simple just maybe some money and some clothes or something uh, I mean when you're a kid you always want toys and stuff but this year I think I just I'll be fine with clothes and some money you gotta go with socks, <laughs> <laughs> socks everyone, loves, everyone loves getting socks, socks for Christmas right? but uh, no I, I asked for the PlayStation 4 and uh, some new headphones for uh, Christmas and I mean, asked for a few video games, but other than that, you know, I, I still ask for some socks. Yeah, I always need a fresh pair of socks to put on. So. <laughs>
Winners of the last three, the North Dakota men's hockey team returns home this weekend to face Northern Michigan. However, there's no complacency for this UND team. Played well, but you know we got a it's a quick turnaround to this weekend. We got to focus up. Northern's not going to be an easy team, and you know they're going to play hard, and we got to be ready for them. It's great, uh, especially it's our first sweep of the year. Um, you know, just kind of it builds confidence with you know the guys. We know what we got to do now. I mean, not that we didn't before, but now that we can execute on uh, what we've been working on and stuff in practice, so I think. Um, Guys are, you know, now starting to realize, you know, what it takes. I mean, they were a great team, and um, you know, it's some guys had some bumps and bruises, but that's just what it's going to take every weekend. Northern Michigan is a familiar name to UND fans. The team was a WCHA member with UND from 1984 until 1997, and won the 1991 national championship. This year's team is a bit of an unknown to UND. I was, I was talking, uh, I was actually mentioning it to Steph today, uh, I don't really know much about Northern Michigan, I don't think anyone does, but um, you know, I'm sure like any other college team we play, I mean, they're going to be tough to play against, they're going to play hard, they're, I mean, big points on the line every night, so uh, I think who, whoever we play this year, especially in our new league, it's, it's going to be a tough game. These non-conference games will play a key role in the national picture as well. Yeah, I think it's huge. I think it not only for the national picture, just our, our team to end, the, to end the break on a positive note here and um, you know come back after Christmas uh, with something we can look back on and build off and, and just go from there. Um, you know, we haven't done the best right now in non-conference, so I think you know to get another two wins is going to be really great for us uh, working our way towards the tournament because, you know, I mean, our main goal is national championship, and in order to get that, we got to get to the tournament. So, non conference is very big. The key word is sweep. One little word. But if UND can continue its winning ways, it will enter the holiday break on a good feeling as it looks to 2014. You know, average is, an ex is uh, accepted here. It's, uh, you got to strive for excellence. And I think, uh, you know, what we did last weekend just puts ourselves in a position to, to really kick off the start here and you know hopefully put together some uh, some weekends. Don't break the glass, Seamus. Why Seamus? Uh, he's got orange hair. He just looks like a Seamus to me. I call him Seamus. I call. Luke Johnson, Larry. Yeah, but you don't look like a Seamus. He looks like a Seamus. Call Luke Johnson, Larry. And then uh, Wade Murphy is Marv. I got that from Home Alone. He was the first nickname I came up with. And call Smalls, Carlos.